Welcome. <laughs> Sorry, you caught me off guard there. Hey, listen, today in my Freightburger Bootcamp Live, I'm going to share with you a tip, a strategy that will really help you out in getting your first shipper as a new freight broker or freight agent. I know that if you're new to the game, maybe you're struggling to get your first, move your first loads and get your first shippers and start making some money. And so today I'm going to share with you one of the easiest and fastest ways to get your new shipper, your first shipper as a new freight broker, freight agent. So welcome to my Freight Broker Bootcamp Live. My name is Dennis Brown. For those of you that don't know me, oh, hey, beforehand, if anybody catching this on replay, hit me up in the, in the comments with hashtag replay. I'd love to hear from you. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Dennis Brown. I've been an entrepreneur for a very long time. Uh, I guess it's going on 30 years now. And I've been very, very blessed, built four multi-million dollar companies in four different industries, started a freight brokerage in 2003, grew it to over $80 million a year in sales and sold it. But I'm also the owner of FreightBrokerBootCamp.com, which is the most cost-effective and comprehensive online freight broker and freight agent training program. Over 10,000 students and counting. Uh, and we offer a 60-day, 100% unconditional money-back guarantee. If there's anybody new on here that wants to check that out, just go to FreightBrokerBootCamp.com. And today, I do these weekly lives. Every Monday at noon, I do a new live. And this week, we're going to talk about how new freight brokers can get their first shipper. I'm going to share with you a strategy on exactly how that's going to work. So here's the agenda. We're going to do the training. First, we're going to do some shout-outs. So hit me up in the comments with the city and state you're logging in from. We'll do some shout-outs. Second, we're going to do the training, right? So this is going to be a short training. And then third, um, we may or may not do a giveaway depending upon the time. Again, sometimes I give away the Freightpreneur t-shirt, someone who solves problems you don't know you have in ways you can't understand. And then um, we will do live Q&A at the end for anybody that sticks around to the end. If you have questions about freight broker startup or freight broker sales or freight broker marketing or whatever it is, um, you know, I'll do my absolute best at the end to try to answer those questions for you. So thank you, everybody who's joining. Let's do some quick shout outs and then we'll jump into the training. So Cynthia, Mar uh, Cynthia Moore, welcome from Maryland. Said one from Houston, Texas. Welcome. Trey got game. Welcome. Amanda from California. Claudia from Michelle, Illinois. Corey from Billings, Montana. Kevin from Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, Lewis, Lewis from Lehigh Acres, Florida. Reginald, welcome. Uh, Harvey Roberts from Hector, Arkansas. Keith Starks from Frisco, Texas. Banks from Mal uh, Malcolm from PA. Trey Got Game is from Beckley, West Virginia. Welcome. We have Pamela from Sarasota, Florida. Welcome, Pamela. Kaylee from Queen Creek, Arizona. Awesome. Samara Trucking, welcome from New York City. Reginald is from Houston. Nicholas from Cleveland, Ohio. Humphrey from Dallas, Texas. So we got people from all over the place joining us. Thank you so much. I'm humbled that you are here, that you're willing to take some time out of your day. Spend with me. Let me share some, some of the knowledge that I've gained over the last 30 years as an entrepreneur, almost 30 years. I started my first business in 1994. So I graduated from college in 1992 with a pre-law degree of all things. Got my first sales job, was horrible, then figured out sales and then decided I had it all figured out. And I knew all the answers. So I went and started my first business and failed miserably for probably about five years. <laughs> and then was blessed to go on and build a few really cool companies and, and, uh, and including Freight Burger Bootcamp, which is a, a huge passion project for me. So, um, all right. So that's what we're going to do. Let's let a few more people get live. It's a little slow this Monday morning. Let's see. What uh, what time is it? Wow. People are joining late. I need a little jolt of caffeine. So while we wait for people to get live again, today we're going to do the training then we're going to probably do a giveaway if we have time. And then we're going to do live Q&A at the end. And today we're going to talk, we're specifically talking to new brokers and new agents, but this will apply to anybody if you're struggling with freight broker sales or you're struggling to get shippers. You see, you know, up markets, down markets, freight tonnage is up, freight tonnage is down, rates are up, rates are down, trucks are loose, trucks are tight. You know, there's always different dynamics going on in the logistics industry especially now that we have such a, uh, a brisk global economy. You know, it's not just here local domestic manufacturing. So we got a lot of import exports. So ultimately, um, if you're struggling with that and you're struggling to get shippers, sometimes this little change, 
this little change that I'm going to share with you in your sales presentation, in your sales pitch, in your sales call can have a huge impact. So hold tight because we are going to start that training in just a minute. All right. So we got a bunch of people live. Let me just, I got a bunch of notes here. Not too often I come in with multi pages. Okay. <laughs> so I have multiple pages here. Let me make sure I've got my, my brain on straight here as far as going through the outline. All right, cool. So, all right. So we got, uh, let's see, a few more people. Keith Strickland from Southfield, Michigan. Cassandra from Chicago. Robert from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, Humphrey from Dallas. Oh, we already talked about that. Nicholas from Cleveland. Ula Mazir. Ula Zamir, I should say, from Minx, Belarus. Welcome. All right, cool. So we're going to get started. So are you a freight broker or freight agent that's struggling to get their first shipper, struggling to move their first load? If you are, you definitely want to lean in, all right, because you're in the right place. Today, I'm going to share with you the fastest and the easiest way to get your first shipper and start moving loads so you can start generating revenue, okay? So this isn't some AI prospecting hack, and this isn't some outsourced sales strategy, and it's not some shipper load or bid board that you can go to and is going to be the cure to all of your ails, okay? That's not what we're going to talk about today. What we're going to talk about today, the fastest and easiest way to get your first shipper is when you are talking to your prospect is to focus on difficult or challenging lanes that they have within their organization. So let me say that again. What you want to do during that sales call is to focus on difficult or challenging lanes that that shipping manager, warehouse manager, logistics manager has. And I promise you, all of them have challenging lanes. So the fact is you have to be willing to prove yourself, right? You have to be willing to work on the hard stuff before you can get what's known as the good stuff, right? So I'm going to tell you a quick story. I started my brokerage in 2000, late in 2003, 2000, early 2004. Um, and I had a lot of sales experience prior to joining the industry, but no logistics or freight brokerage or trucking experience. But I was able to cross over very quickly, meaning that I was able to get shippers. I started moving loads with my own customers within the first couple of weeks of being a broker. So I was able to transition pretty quickly, pretty easily. But shortly after that, I hired a few salespeople. Some of them had a little bit of sales experience. Some of them had no sales experience, but I had hired them and I noticed that their first few weeks, they were really struggling. Okay. All of them were really struggling. And so one day I called them in, it was an early morning meeting. I called them in and sat them down and I said, listen, today, all we're going to focus on is offering our existing prospects and any new prospects that you talk to today. All we're going to focus on is offering them help with their difficult or challenging lanes. Okay. Say it with me, people, difficult or challenging lanes. All right. So that's what I did. And I said, at the end of the day, I want you to report back to me on how things are going. And lo and behold, by the end of the day, all three salespeople had come back to me and said, Dennis, we have new opportunities. They all had new opportunities and they were excited to come to work the next day. And I promise you that wasn't the tone that wasn't the feeling at the end of every day prior to that. So the good news is, is that within a few weeks, all three of the salespeople that had deployed this technique had new or their first shippers, their first or new shippers that they had, and they were moving loads for them. So it worked extremely well. And from that point forward, whenever I had a new salesperson to get them over the hump and start building their confidence, if they didn't already have a lot of sales experience or the sales chops to kind of sell the way I was selling, I would introduce them to that strategy and it worked virtually every time. If you were willing to work, that strategy would work, okay? And so um, basically what happened was this. 
I'll first, let me explain to you what I mean by difficult or challenging lanes. Okay. Let me explain to you what I mean by that. Right. Not all lanes, not all freight lanes are created equal. Okay. They're just not. Some are just harder to cover. And it usually has to do with the geography of the pickup location or the geography of the delivery location, or maybe it's a unique equipment type, or maybe it's a multi-pick or multi-drop load. Those are some examples of frequently frequent lanes that are frequently considered difficult or challenging, okay? And every shipper has them, I promise you. So a perfect example, when I started my freight brokerage back in 03, we focused on Northeast outbound van freight. You guys have probably heard that story. If it originated in the Northeast and it went on a van and it was going West or South, that was what we focused. That was our niche. And so, you know, it was easy when we would get shippers that had a load from Boston to Chicago that was going on a van. If we posted that load, our load our, uh, to the load board, our, our phones would ring off the wall. They would literally ring off the wall and you couldn't answer all the calls. So it was very easy to cover those loads, cover those lanes. But if you were trying to move a load from, let's say, Watertown, New York, down to Newark, New Jersey, or you posted a load from Lake Champlain down to Allentown, PA, right? The phones might, you might get one or two, or you might get zero calls from the load boards, okay? So the fact is not all lanes are created equal. Not all lanes are as easy to cover as other lanes. And so everyone wanted the Northeast outbound freight because they knew it was easy to cover. But the reality is, here's what I want you to consider. All right, consider this. I got a few points I want you to consider. Number one, new prospects don't trust you yet. Okay, mainly because you haven't given them a reason to. All right, number two, all of these shippers have existing brokers and existing carriers that they've been working with for years. And they're focused on keeping them happy. They're not focused on bringing on new vendors all of the time. Number three, every shipper has challenging and difficult lanes. Every shipper, okay? Big or small, they always run into some lanes where the shipping manager, logistics manager struggles because either the carrier gives it back or the carrier has some sort of delay issue or the broker hands it back to them last minute and they've got to recover it. And so there's always those difficult lanes. Number four, challenging freight is not cheap freight. So what I'm saying to you is this, understand something. I'm not telling you that you are focused on being the cheapest because challenging freight and cheap freight are typically not the same. As a matter of fact, on the contrary, difficult and challenging lanes can sometimes be way more expensive relatively to easy to move lanes, all right? And the reason being is because there's less capacity, right? So it's sometimes there's less capacity or there's more complexity. And so that rate will go up. OK, so I don't want you to mis misunderstand difficult or challenging lanes with cheap freight because those are not the same thing. OK, and number five, you have to be willing to prove yourself. And when you do, you can get your foot in the door and you can become a trusted partner. OK, so when you sit down the next time to start making sales to shippers, right, to start making prospecting calls and start doing some sales efforts and some outreach. What I want you to focus in on, you still have to get their attention. You still got to build rapport. You still have to do all those things. But when you start talking to your shipper, what I want you to do is I want you to offer your services on their difficult or challenging lanes. And what you're going to find is you're going to get a lot more response. You're going to get a lot more dialogue. You're going to get a lot more opportunities to quote rates, do research, and possibly even get loads. And so the fact is, you know, it's worked for me. It's worked for many of the salespeople I've trained, many of the other people that I've shared this tip with. And the fact is, it can work for you. And what you have to understand is you have to be willing to prove yourself. Once you prove yourself to that shipper and you move the first load, which is always the most difficult, 
it just gets exponentially easier from there. Now you can't sit back on your laurels and just expect that you're going to get new loads every day just because you move one load. But the fact is you've built enough trust where you, it's very likely that you'll start getting loads on a regular basis or opportunities on a regular basis. And that's all you can ask for is a new broker within a new shipper. So I hope you guys like that. If you did, make sure you hit the like button, okay? That's the price of admission. Hit the like button right now. Uh, if you're curious about becoming a freight broker or a freight agent, and you're just looking for some help, some A to Z, some steps to guide you through it, check out FreightBrokerBootCamp.com. Again, trained over 10,000 students, had that program since 2009. Um, and we offer a 60 day, 100% unconditional money back guarantee if you're not happy for any reason. So you can check that out at FreightBurgerBootCamp.com. All right, cool. So for those of you that are going to stick around, let me see what time it is. Okay. So we have time to do a giveaway. Let's do a giveaway. All right. Hold your questions, hold your questions. So first, before we jump into the giveaway, give me some feedback here. How many of you in the comments are struggling with getting your first shippers, um, getting your first customers, and you think this tip could help, okay? Hit me up in the comments and let me know. I wanna hear from you guys because, you know, I the goal here is for you to, for me to be able to serve you in a way that allows you to perpetuate and move forward with your business. I mean, I don't wanna come up here and just pontificate about, just random shit that doesn't really matter. I try to take things from my past, from my history, from my archives, and I want to share it with you in a way that allows you to be able to leverage it to grow your business. See, I was fortunate. I've already done it, right? I did over $200 million as a freight broker. I, you know, I sold that business. I was very, very blessed. Now it's your turn, but you got to take some of that knowledge and you got to deploy it, right? So let's see what the feedback is. All right, cool. Good. Yeah, I mean, you know, just be willing to prove yourself. You have to be willing to prove yourself. If you're willing to prove yourself by working on difficult or challenging lanes, first of all, you're going to get an opportunity because most brokers, you know, most of their incumbent brokers and carriers are going to shy away from that stuff. They don't like to move the tough stuff, right? They don't like to move the difficult stuff. Why? Because it's work. It's hard. They might fail and they don't want to fail to their shipper. And so the reality is if you come in, you have absolutely nothing to lose because you only have anything to gain. You don't have a customer, so you're trying to garner it. And the way to do that is to kind of find the pain. And the pain is that challenging or difficult lane, offer your services, and then go above and beyond to impress and prove to that shipper that you've actually are willing to work hard and that you're a valuable asset. And if you do, they'll bring you into the fold and you can then become, you know, part of the regular rotation with getting freight based upon your willingness to earn it. So I hope that helps. All right. Okay. All right. Hold your questions, guys. We're not doing Q&A yet. Hold your questions. You're going to have to re-ask these questions. If you got a question here, you're going to have to re-ask because uh, we're doing we're going to do the giveaway right now. Okay. All right. So here you go, guys. Here's what you need to do. Here's all you got to do. Um, I want you to go to your smartphone. Pull out your smartphone right now. Your Apple or Android phone. Pull it out. Go ahead. Do it. And I want you to go to if you're on Apple, go to the podcast app. If you're on Android, go to Spotify or to Google Podcast or some other podcast app or wherever you listen to music. And I want you to pull up the, and I want you to search for Freight Broker Bootcamp. Now, Freight Broker Bootcamp, you'll see, again, my bald, shiny head and the logo there, right? Freight Broker Bootcamp. Pull up the Freight Broker Bootcamp podcast. It's the Freight Broker Bootcamp audio experience. It's where I share the best of the best freight broker training in audio format. And I want you to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. And then come back into the comments and let me know, rated, reviewed, subscribed on Apple or on Spotify or on, you know, wherever it is, right? Google Podcast. You have to do it. You have to let me know you rate, reviewed, subscribed, and the platform. If you don't do that, you can't win, all right? And I'm going to give away a Freightpreneur t-shirt 
someone that solves problems you don't know you have in ways you can't understand. Okay. I'm going to give that away. Um, you have to be in the United States because I don't ship these overseas. And if you've already won a t-shirt, um, try to let some of the other people play along. Okay. Um, I know I've given away hundreds of these over the years, by the way, hundreds, I mean, literally hundreds. Um, so yeah, it's very popular. Someone who solves problems you don't know you have in ways you can't understand, I'll ship it off to you. So go out to the podcast, um, rate, review, and subscribe. Come back into the comments. Let me know you did that and you'll be entered as a chance to win the Freightpreneur t-shirt. Lewis has done it. We got some other people who are going to do it. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to pull up your podcast app. Most people listen to this on either Apple or Spotify, but it's on all kinds of different podcast apps. So if you listen to podcasts or music in other places, chances are if you search for Freight Burger Bootcamp, it'll come up and you can rate, review, and subscribe. Come into the comments. Let me know you did that. And then you will have a chance to win the Freightpreneur t-shirt. So right now, if I did the drawing right now, Lewis is guaranteed to win because he's the only one that's done it so far. So um, either no one wants the shirt or you don't listen to podcasts. Listen, you guys, podcast is my favorite way to consume information. Literally. I do it when I'm driving. I do it when I'm on the treadmill working out. I do it when I'm walking the dogs. I do it when I'm hunting in a tree sometimes. When there's when I'm out deer hunting, a lot of times there's some dead time, right? Maybe it's the, you know, a couple hours before dark, or maybe it's, you know, a few hours after light and things are kind of slow. You know, I have my earbuds in and sometimes I'll be listening to a podcast. It's my favorite way to learn. If you guys aren't listening to podcasts, you're missing the boat. And we've been ranked as a, one of the top 100 out of all entrepreneur podcasts online by Apple, right? So it's the best of the best of the best audio trainings and it's 100% free. Okay, it costs you nothing. There's no cost. All right, so we got a few other people. Uh, Cassandra, you should see uh, if you if you follow, and then it should say I think that's a subscribe or follow, and then typically there's a rating, a rate review where you can click a number of stars and then just put a quick review in there. That's it shouldn't be you should be able to find it. All right. So what do we got? Hmm. So we I know probably a lot of people have already won. I know we've had a lot of people that have won the shirt in the past. Anybody who hasn't won, come on, let's go. Google podcast done. Kaylee. Oh, yeah, because on Google, you can't rate review. That's right. They don't rate review on Google. So you're fine, Kaylee. Um, yeah, you did it on because you can't rate review on Google podcast. I remember that. All right. On Spotify, you can rate and review. On Apple, you can rate and review. But on Google, I don't think you can. That's stupid that they don't allow you to do that. All right, listen, let's wrap this up. You guys got you guys got about one more minute. You got about 30 seconds or so, and then we're going to jump into live Q&A. Hold tight because I'm going to do live Q&A, all right, which means hold your questions. I will tell you when to put them into the comments, and then I will do my best to answer as many questions as I can, okay? I promise I won't get to all of them because I never can. We will have a limited amount of time. It's already 1223, so the training was pretty short, which is good. But said one, you got to do it the right way. Rate, reviewed, subscribed. I can't pick you as a winner if you don't do. Rate, reviewed, subscribed on, okay? Uh, Claudia, rate, reviewed, subscribed where? I need to know. Rate, reviewed, subscribed Apple. Rate, reviewed, subscribed Spotify, right? That's the important thing for me. I'm trying to gather data on where you're listening, and I want to understand um, that you've done it. And that's the only way I can do it because we have a lot of people. Um, the, the stream goes very, very quick. You understand, I, my feed is not just YouTube, but I have LinkedIn, I've got Facebook, I've got YouTube. So I get all the comments. So sometimes it flies through there, okay? <clears throat> all right, guys, I'm gonna pick a winner. Close my eyes, randomly pick a winner. And the winner is Pamela. <laughs> Congratulations, Pamela. Pamela is the winner. Rate, reviewed, subscribed on Apple. Pamela was also a part of my Freight Broker Sales Accelerator, the most recent group, the most recent cohort of paid students who went through my Freight Broker Sales Training Program. So congratulations to Pamela. She was a wonderful student. I'm sure she's going to do great. 
Congratulations, Pamela. Just message me either. Uh, I think on LinkedIn, we're connected or on Facebook, your full name, address, uh, your size, your t-shirt size. Okay. It's, it's unisex sizing, small, medium, large. Um, and then let me know that you won the podcast subscribe t-shirt giveaway. Okay. So message me with your full name, your address, um, your size, and that you won the podcast subscribe t-shirt giveaway. I'll send off the shirt. You'll get it within a couple of weeks. Thank you everybody for playing along. Thank you so much. All right, guys, let's jump into Q and A. If you typed your question earlier, I'm sorry, you got to type it again. If you want me to answer it, hit me up in the comments with your questions and I will do my absolute best to try to answer them in the time allotted. If I don't have the answers, I'll try to point you in the right direction. And if I don't get to all the questions, I'll try to come back in later uh, during the week and see if I can respond to them via the thread or through messaging. Okay. Lewis has a question. I recently, or Lais, I don't know how to pronounce that. Lace? Lais? Lace? Okay. Not sure. I recently started Freightburger Bootcamp, and the main concern is getting shippers. I want to get all the training and knowledge, but I need to be able to succeed in this. Okay. So is there a question there? Come back to me with a real question. You got to give me a specific question. You can't just say I'm concerned about getting shippers. Okay. That just way too generic. I need specific questions. Okay. I'll be happy to try to answer, but I need you to be specific. Uh, hi, Dennis. I usually ask, what challenges do you have in transportation? And in 90% of the cases, they say we have no issues. Does this question sound the same to shippers as the question, what difficult lanes? Yeah, it's not the same. It's not the same. What challenges do you have is very salesy. Okay. It sounds very salesy. You sound like a salesperson. Who's the decision maker? Uh, what challenges do you have, right? I mean, those are those are things that you should probably already know at the surface level. So don't take it the wrong way. What I'm trying to say to you is you're going to, when you if you get past the introduction and they're willing to give you a little bit of time, during the discussion, you're going to feel the flow of the conversation and you're going to make the offer to say, listen, John, all right, let me prove myself to you. And here's how that would work. Every traffic manager, logistics manager, shipping manager has difficult or challenging lanes that come up from time to time. Wouldn't you agree? They're going to say yes. There's always, not all freight is creating equal. They're going to say yes. So here's what I'm going to propose to you. Give me an opportunity to work on some of your most challenging freight. You know what I mean? The type of freight that when you give it to another broker or another carrier, you hear a, a big sigh or a groan on the other side of the phone because they don't want that lane. They don't want that load. I'm more than willing to prove myself and help you cover that difficult freight just for the opportunity to get my foot in the door. That's how you leverage the challenging or difficult freight. That's why it's different than asking them what challenges do you have. It's very different. One sounds very salesy. One is very transparent, very honest, and very invaluable. Now, not every shipper is going to respond. I'm not guaranteeing that every shipper is going to just hand over the checkbook. That, that's not going to happen. Okay. But what's your, your batting average, right? Your batting average is going to go way up, way up. And then as you increase the, increase the batting averages and you have better quality, more quality conversations and you're able to do more quotes, you'll have more opportunities and you'll get more loads. That's really what it comes down to. Good question. Thank you. Connor, Dennis, what do you think is that, what do you think it's worth to purchase the premium LinkedIn account or the basic one is fine? I think the basic one is fine and still until you start bumping your head on the ceiling. And what I mean by that is the basic account is going to limit you to the amount of searches that you can do on LinkedIn. So as you do a lot of searches on LinkedIn for different prospects, different people in your niche, you're going to start bumping your head on the ceiling. And that's where the paid account comes in. I don't necessarily think that you need to do it day one. 
But if you're leveraging LinkedIn as a core part of your sales process and your sales outreach and your sales research and gathering sales intelligence, then you're probably going to want to get it at some point. They have different subscription levels. You know, there's you don't always have to buy the sales navigator, which I think is one of the more expensive ones. Look at some of the different subscription levels. And what you're looking for is, with this with the paid subscription is they're going to give you some expanded capability to search and filter. They're going to give you some abilities to be able to, you know, to um, stay closer in contact and and just manage your prospects and manage your contacts a little bit better. But um, if you're heavily using LinkedIn, you're probably going to need some subscription. If you're just start getting started with it, you probably won't. You can probably get your first shipper and then start reinvesting some of those profits into, into a LinkedIn subscription. Okay. Hope that helps. Um, do you prefer Lucia or Sales Genie? Uh, I don't know. I, I like Lucia only because it ha I know I've used the uh, Chrome plugin that aut automatically integrates with LinkedIn. Um, I don't know if Sales Genie has that. If it does, then they're probably the same. I don't have an opinion either way because I've never used Sales Genie that way. Now, I know what Sales Genie is, but I've never used it. So, but I've used, I've used Lucia. So. Yeah, both good tools. Hunter asks, what are the best ways to find shippers or where do you find customers who want to use a broker? <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to give you two high level answers. Okay, meaning at, at a high level, I can't narrow it down because I don't have, it's a little bit too generic of a question. There's two ways that companies that businesses get customers. One is inbound and the other is outbound, right? So you get inbound inquiries or outbound sales outreach. As a startup, in most cases, you are going to get, you're going to be doing more outbound. That means you're going to be doing more prospecting. You're going to reach out through LinkedIn or through email or through phone or through face-to-face, -face, right? And so you're going to use those strategies to do outreach. And so the best way to find shippers or where do you find customers? Uh, you know, the other part of it is it depends on your niche, right? Where do you find shippers? Okay. Where do you find shippers? So you find shippers. You can either, there's two ways to find shippers. One is free, which is free resources like Google and Thomas net and different, you know, maybe associations or free databases online specific to your niche, or you can pay for data, right? We were just talking about Lucia and Sales Genie and Zoom Info and all these different sales databases that you can actually subscribe to and pay for. But data is not cheap, I promise you, okay? I think Zoom Info, I think their cheapest product out there is like 15,000 bucks a year. So most startups aren't going to use it because it's pretty expensive, okay? Um, but there are other free resources out there where you can aggregate data. Some of the best places to get that data are th places like ThomasNet, if you want it for free, because that's absolutely free. Thomas Registry, ThomasNet. The other, uh, some other ones are associations, because a lot of times you can see the members of the association. Um, others are just doing local Google searches. You know, steel industry, Buffalo, New York. It'll give you some local companies that are in the steel industry in your geography. So those are a few tips on how you can find them. As far as getting them, again, the outbound is sales outreach. The inbound is either paid ads of some sort, maybe on Google, or maybe you're doing content marketing with your blog and SEO, or maybe you're doing social media marketing on LinkedIn where you're publishing content on LinkedIn and generating inbound leads. So I'm giving you high level examples. I mean, if you want if you have a follow-up question, then feel free to ask. Okay, Pamela asks, Dennis, what is the best way for a new broker to develop credibility with shippers and carriers without using factoring companies? Well, here's the thing. On the financial management side, there's only really two ways you can do it. You're either going to self-finance the, the carrier cost because you're typically going to have to pay the carrier before you get money from the shipper, okay? So there's a negative cash flow there. 
if you if you build the shipper 2000 and you have to pay the carrier 1800 and you got to pay the carrier in 30 days and the shipper doesn't pay you for 45 days you've got negative cash flow you're out 1800 before you get the 2000 okay so that's not uncommon that happens and so you either have to have that pile of money a credit line or some resource that you can use for that money if you're going to self finance those payables, those carrier invoices, okay? If you, the other option is to use a factoring company, okay? If you use a factoring company, then you're using what's called OPM, other people's money. Now, I don't want to get into factoring, but factoring allows you to cash flow that without coming out of pocket. As a matter of fact, when you give the shipper the invoice, they're going to advance you up to 95% of that invoice um, they're going to pay the carrier and they're going to give you the Delta, right? The money, either you're going to pay the carrier with that money or they're going to pay the carrier. And, you know, if you were making, uh, you know, and for a small fee, typically somewhere in the three to 5%, they'll finance your receivables, right? So you use their money to pay the carrier and then you get paid the difference between your fees and whatever the profit was on that load. So those are the, really the only two ways you can do it. Now, if you're trying to, if you don't have that money setting aside, and it's not like you need a hundred thousand dollars sitting there, you know, you can turn your money over quickly, right? Um, that first month is the most challenging part. Sometimes there's some ways you can do it with shippers where you might be able to offer the shipper a discount for a net 10 day pay. So you say, Hey, listen, I'll offer you a 1% net 10 if the care of customer pays in 10 days, or maybe even a 2% net 10 if they pay in 10 days. And they can save that money um, if they pay you in 10 days. And that's going to give you the ability to use that cash to pay your carriers. So you won't have to have factoring. So that's an idea. So I, I hope that's answering your question. I'm not sure if it's not come back with a follow-up. Uh, Samara, shippers will not trust a new broker. So how can you build a credit score through on Sonia? <laughs> I don't know, Samara. You know, we have students all the time, new students that are getting shippers and building new bu building businesses and they're moving loads for shippers. And I know that at the beginning, building your credit as a carrier or as a broker can be challenging. Here's what I'm going to say to you. Go to my YouTube channel. Hold on, let me pull it up. Let me pull up my YouTube channel here. Okay. Go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash freight brokers and search in my videos, right? Go to my videos and then click search and then search build credit. You're going to find a video where I interviewed, uh, there's two videos there. I think one of them is where I interviewed one of my students, Elio Longoria, who was a startup who made startup without using factoring. Okay. Without using factoring was able to take his credit from zero credit to I think B credit within like 30 or 45 days. And he made over $7,000 in his first week as a broker. And he shares his exact strategy on how he did that. Okay. So that would probably be the best resource for you right now. Where are we? I got lost here. Sorry. I'm scrolling. Give me one minute. Um, Pamela, the factoring terms are what they are. Money controls the deal, right? Factoring is expensive. But here's the thing. Factoring is only used as an interim strategy for you to build your own credit with a bank, right? Right or for you to be able to establish enough, save enough money and have enough profit to be able to leverage it so you don't have to use factoring. I would strongly suggest that you break away from factoring as soon as you possibly can. Now that might take you six months, a year, two years, depending upon you know, what happens inside your business. But the reality is I would break away from factoring as quick as I could because it can be expensive and it's always cheaper, right? If you're paying 5% off the top, right? You charge a shipper a thousand bucks and you got to pay the factoring company 50 bucks, right? And then the other money is yours. Yeah, that's expensive, but you got to understand 
the risk is on them. They control the deal, right? So short-term financing, receivable financing like that is not cheap, but it gets you through that early stage, which allows you to actually establish your business. So if you either don't have the money sitting on the side or you don't have the credit or you don't have an investor that is willing to give you that money, then at that point, you are you really have to use factoring. It's the only way you'll probably be able to do it. Um, and so that's why it's there. Uh, once you receive the money from shipper, what payment methods do you use to pay the carrier? Typically one of two. You're typically ACHing it or you're sending them a check, right? Those are the two least expensive. So you're not going to use a very expensive one. I'm sure there are other strategies out there. You know, I'm sure that there's people that pay with PayPal and I'm sure there's people that pay with Zelle and I'm sure there's people that pay with all these different strategies, but it's usually ACH or a check. Thank you, said one. Appreciate it. I'm shedding a little gold. Here, you want to laugh? I'm going to share something with you guys. It just only because it's sitting right here. Hold on a minute. We're in the Q&A, so we got a little bit of time. I'm going to share something with you. You mentioned the gold. It's funny. Well, here. I'm actually, what you guys probably don't know about me is I'm a gold and silver bug. And what I mean by that is I actually invest in gold and silver. This is a... This is a gold eagle. This is a one ounce gold eagle. It's about a $2,000 coin. There's another one. There's another one. So I invest in gold. So I'm sharing some of the gold in here. What's funny is this. I also invest in silver. I know this is an offshoot, but if, I thought you guys might find it interesting. This is a 100 ounce bar of silver, pure 999 silver. Okay. So I bought, I picked some up the other day and it would just happen to be sitting here on my desk and you mentioned gold. So I figured I'd share that little fact about me. I'm a gold and silver bug. I've been investing in it for several years. And uh, I'm a bit of a hoarder when it comes to gold and silver. So it's become a little bit of a problem. But anyway, I'm glad I could share some verbal gold with you. Unfortunately, I can't give you any real gold today. But um, Samara asked, do you think buying a small book of business to start is a good way to start a new brokerage firm? Well, it might be. Just you have to understand the risks. Let's say, for example, you're a trucking company like you are, and you want to buy a small brokerage, someone who maybe been in business for a year and maybe has did a half a million dollars. I'm just hypothetical, right? They got a half a million dollar book of business. What you have to consider in that is that number one, there's probably it's probably a one person operation, probably. And all of the revenue is controlled by that one person. So if something happens to that one person, that's a challenge. As well as the fact that if they don't stay on board with you for, an, for at least a six month period of time, most of those customers are not going to transition with you. Number two, if it's a small book of business, 80% of the, of the revenue and profit is probably going to come from one or two shippers. And so again, if those don't transition for whatever reason, then you've got the risk of what you paid for the business and it's going to take you a much longer time to recover your investment. And then third, obviously, is the terms, right? Um, and the cost. So, yeah, I'm not against acquiring a small business. You just have to make sure you do the proper due diligence, the proper vetting, and that you have the risk tolerance for potentially losing that money or for a long time uh, a long term repayment. You know, because if, if something doesn't transition, say you paid. $100,000 for a small book of business, you know, you uh, and one or two of those big customers don't transition. It, it might take you two or three or four or five years to recover that money, but it gets you in the game. I, uh, some of it depends upon your risk tolerance. Some of it depends upon your financial ability. Some of it depends upon the terms of the deal, but a lot of it depends upon, you know, that person that controls the revenue and those few customers that control the majority of the revenue of whether they're going to transition or not. I hope that makes sense. For those of you that it doesn't, just know acquiring a business is not a joke. It's not easy. There's a lot of complexity in it. Um, but it's very doable if you check all the boxes.
Yeah, they're going to have, uh, Pamela, I'm concerned about the UCC lien terms. However, it sounds like self-funding is not uncommon. Yeah, self-funding is, self-funding is more uncommon than starting with factoring. More people start with factoring than self-funding, okay? Because most people just don't have 20 or 30 or 40 or $50,000 sitting on the sideline that they can invest into that short-term, you know, loan to repay before the shipper pays you. Um, but that would be your cheapest way to go and the best way if you have those resources. If not, you use factoring. But the UCC terms are no different than if you had bank financing, okay? If you had a bank loan, if you were working with a bank and you had a business and you were doing well and they're going to give you a line of credit, they're, I promise you they're going to have a UCC filing on those receivables, okay? Bank financing is still going to have a UCC filing on those receivables. They are always going to have first position on those on your assets. That's just the way it works. Okay. So I hope that helps. Either way, you're going to have to give a bank or factoring UCC terms. <laughs> Cassandra, I'm glad you liked it. Uh, okay. Harvey asks, what documents should be included in the in the broker shipper agreement. Hmm. So the broker shipper agreement is really just the broker shipper agreement. Um, it's not a bunch of documents with it. If you're talking about the, the shipper setup pack, that's a little bit different. In that case, you're going to want to include a W9. If it's a setup pack, you're going to want to, you can, you can include the shipper agreement if you want a W9. Um, you're going to want to include some specific details about um, you know the shipper care the shipper broker or the shipper packet is really some matter of fact here here's what I'm going to tell you here's the easiest way to do it go to my YouTube channel Harvey and if you go to my YouTube channel youtube.com forward slash freight brokers and click on videos and then you search inside my videos for shipper packet or carrier packet I do a walkthrough of of I take an existing shipper carrier packet from an actual broker and from an actual carrier, and I uh, and I walk I walk you through those or some of the components of that. So I think that would be very helpful to you, Harvey. I hope that helps. All right, cool. So I think that's going to wrap it up for today. Um, listen, I appreciate you guys being here. Have uh, I, I really appreciate you guys being here. Have an awesome day. Have an awesome week. Make sure you hit the like button. Um, share the stream wherever you can. Make sure you set a reminder on your phone or on your desktop or on your calendar to join me every Monday at noon for a new Freight Burger Bootcamp Live. And if you guys are curious about becoming a freight broker or a freight agent, maybe this is your first time and you're looking for some training, you're looking for some help, you're looking for some support, check out FreightBrokerBootCamp.com. Again, trained over 10,000 students had the program since 2009 and we offer a 100% unconditional money back guarantee, a 60 day guarantee. So uh, appreciate you guys being here. Appreciate um, all the great, all the great, all the kind words and all the great questions. I'll see you next week on another Freight Broker Bootcamp Live. Make sure you're there Monday at noon. Talk to you soon, people. Thank you.